video, I'm going to show you how to make a practical and beautiful gift using felting. We're going to be using worsted weight wool. This is Be So Brave, and 100% American merino wool that's feltable. We're going to be using it in three colors to make this case. It's all done in single crochet in the round, and then we add a padded foam lining inside. And when you order the yarn for me, I'm going to include two sheets of this foam lining for free. Make sure you go to my website to download the free pattern. This particular size will fit an 11 inch laptop or an iPad Pro. The foam lining really adds a lot of extra protection. And then we add these elastic bands to keep it secure. The video will be done in three parts. First, I'm going to show you how to crochet the case with Be So Brave yarn. Then I'm going to show you how to sew the lining inside and then we'll attach the elastic bands at the end. Let's get started. The original case is worked in Be So Brave yarn in colorways Everglade, Lincoln Lime, and Plymouth Rock. And in today's demonstration, I'm going to make a second case in Flamingo, Waves of Grain, and American Beauty. I'm going to be using a size eight millimeter crochet hook, which is also considered an M or 13. Let's get started. We're gonna start by tying our yarn onto our crochet hook. Please use whichever type of method you prefer. You can use a slip knot. I prefer a solid knot. And we're gonna start with a chain 36. I'm using waves of grain for the first color. Okay, we've got a chain 36. Let's set that down so you can see what it looks like. And now we're going to work a single crochet into the second chain from our hook. You don't count the loop on your hook when counting a chain. So you wanna start here. This would be the first chain from your hook. Here is the second chain from our hook. So we're gonna insert our crochet hook into that chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. That's one single crochet completed. We're now going to work a single crochet in the next chain. And again. And again. You want to work one single crochet in each of these chains along till we have 35 total. Okay, we started with a chain 36, single crochet into the second chain from hook, then single crochet in each chain across for a total of 35 single crochets. We're now going to turn our work around and work 35 more single crochets in the opposite side of that beginning chain. So now we're going to come around and work a second single crochet in that last chain worked. 
and then working in the bottom loop of each of those chains, we're gonna work one single crochet in each across. So that was the first one. Here's the second one. Three. Four. Five. We're going to single crochet in each one across. Notice how I'm crocheting over the beginning tail, just so I don't have to weave it in later. You could not do that and weave it in with a needle later, or with a yarn needle later on. I'm just working over it, so it's one less thing to do at the end. Okay, we should have 70 single crochets completed now. We started here, we came across the entire chain, turned the corner, and came back along the opposite side of the chain to single crochet along both edges of that beginning chain. And now we're not going to join this in the round with a slip stitch, we're going to add a split ring stitch marker instead so that we can work in a spiral. So I'm just gonna mark that this is the beginning of our round and we're just going to work in a spiral round, meaning we don't join at the end of each individual round. So we're going to insert our crochet hook into both loops of that first single crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. And so this would be the first single crochet of round two. We're gonna single crochet in each of the 70 stitches for round two. Okay, we worked all the way around. We now have 
Row two, round two complete, 70 stitches worked all the way around. We now remove our stitch marker and move it up a row, around, so that we can remember the beginning and end of each round. So now you want to repeat round two for a total of 13 rounds. So rounds three through 13 are going to be repeating round We're two. Going to repeat round two by single crocheting in each of the 70 stitches around. This is the end of round three and you can see it's starting to curl up on itself. We're starting to get the shape of the bottom of the base. This is what it looks like at the end of round four. Round five. See it's starting to curve up but it's not enough to actually keep it flat like that. So just wanted to make sure you see what it looks like at the end of each round six. Round seven. Round eight, round nine, round ten, round twelve. Okay, I've done all of the first 13 rounds in the one color, and this is the point when you need to decide which color is going to be your contrast stripe color and which color is going to be the other color blocked color. I went from Everglades in the beginning, like I'm doing with Waves of Grain here, and then I switched to Lincoln Lime for the stripe and then went to Plymouth Rock for the second color blocking color. For this project, I have a choice between Flamingo and American Beauty. I think it would look the best for my personal taste to do flamingo for the stripe and then do American Beauty for the second color blocked color. So for the next few rounds I'm going to be alternating between waves of grain and flamingo. And to start the first round we actually start with the last stitch of the last round and so we're going to start the last stitch by pulling up a loop for our next single crochet and then adding the new yarn for the second half of the stitch and that positions us to begin with the next color. Notice how the stitch is still the correct color but by pulling the last step through in the second color you're positioned to start the second color. I'm going to hold my tail in as I go here as well so that it's one less, one less end to weave in at the end and I'm going to now single crochet in each stitch around with my second color. And I'm going to do this until I get to the last stitch and then I'll show you how we change color again to go back to the original color to continue on in stripes. Okay, we're ready to do our last stitch in this round, so we're going to begin the stitch with the color we're using. Yarn over, pull up a loop, then we're going to switch to the next color and pull the last loop of the stitch through with the second color. And that positions us to begin the next stitch and the next round with the original color. So now we're going to do a stripe in waves of grain. And you're just going to single crochet in each stitch around and when we get to the last stitch I'll show you how we convert back to the flamingo to start the next round of color. Okay, we're ready to begin our last stitch of this round, so we're going to insert our hook like we're doing a regular single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, and we're going to switch to the color for the next round, 
so that we finish this round with the appropriate color and we're now ready to start the next round with the new color. Once you have three stripes in Waves of Grain and four stripes in Flamingo, it's time to finish off the Waves of Grain and start our second color blocked color, American Beauty. Okay, we're going to finish our last stitch in a round of Flamingo by Yarn Over Pull Up a Loop. When we have two loops on our hook with Flamingo, we're going to finish the stitch with American Beauty so that we are prepped to start the next stitch in a new stripe of American Beauty. This is the color blocked color that begins for the top of the case. Now we're going to single crochet in each stitch around with American Beauty and you might want to crochet around your tail just so you have one less end to weave in at the end. Fasten off our original color, Waves of Grain, making sure you leave it long enough for weaving in the tail. Okay, we've got three stripes of Waves of Grain and three stripes of American Beauty surrounded by stripes of Flamingo, which is just exactly what we did here. We have three stripes of Everglade and three stripes of Plymouth Rock surrounded by all these stripes of Lincoln Lime. Now we're ready to begin the last portion of the case and that's where we're going to work rounds of just American Beauty. You can cut off Flamingo now. Make sure you leave the tail nice and long for weaving in the loose ends later. And now we can work six rounds total in American Beauty. So you just want to work six rounds in single crochet and after that I'll show you how to do the flap in rows. We're going to start the flap now and that's worked in rows not rounds. So we're going to be working around uh, along only one half of the bag. So if it's 70 stitches around we're going to be working along the 35 along one side. So you're going to start by chain one and we're now going to turn and work one single crochet in each of the next 35 stitches. Okay, now we'll chain one, turn our work, and work 35 stitches along those last 35 stitches that we just worked working one single crochet in each stitch across. Okay, now we're going to start working the angle of the flap, and that's by doing some decreases. So we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and we're gonna work a single crochet two together, which means we start a stitch in the first stitch, so insert your hook in the crochet, in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then insert your crochet hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. We now have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. So we've taken two, stitch, two stitches and turned them into one. And you want a single crochet in each stitch across until you get to the last two stitches. And we'll do the same thing that we did over the first two stitches over the last two stitches. Okay, we're down to the last two stitches. You're going to insert your hook, pull up a loop in each one with three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Chain one, we're going to turn our work now and work a single crochet two together over the first two stitches. Insert your crochet hook in the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert the crochet hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Single crochet in each stitch across to the last two stitches.
Okay, we're down to the last two stitches. We're going to single crochet in together through both of them. So insert your crochet hook in the first stitch, pull up a loop, insert your crochet hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. We're now ready to finish off our bag and that's we're going to slip stitch in each stitch across the flap row, each end of row along the sides of the flap, and each stitch along the last round of the bag. So we're going to start by working along the side of the rows along the flap and we're going to slip stitch in each end of row. And what that means is we're going to insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through the loop, and the loop on your hook all in one swoop. And then when we get down to our stitches on the last round of the bag, we're going to do the same thing. Slip stitch in each stitch around. This tightens up the edge before felting. Okay, we're back to the end of rows now. We're going to slip stitch in each end of row. And then we can now slip stitch in each stitch along the last row of the flap. Come all the way back to the beginning now. So we're going to cut our yarn, leaving a long tail enough to be able to weave in our loose ends and we'll fasten off. So now we have our felted case, pre-felted. So this is what it looks like before we felt. And you can see the size difference between the two. It's not a whole lot different length or uh, height wise, but it's a lot narrower width wise. So that's how this yarn in this stitch pattern is going to felt differently. In the next section of the video, I'm going to show you how to create a lining out of these really cool foam mats and we're going to cut them to size and sew them together to create a beautiful protective lining inside the bag. Please refer to the felting instructions on the free pattern download on my website to explain how to felt this. Basically, you're going to be putting it in the washing machine on hot water setting with anything that will do high agitation, whether it's towels or jeans or something that'll give it a lot of movement in the wash, hot water, soap, and agitation, and it could take one to two cycles to get the results that you're looking for. And now in this section, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the lining. Remember, when you order the Be So Brave yarn for this kit, I will include two sheets of this foam lining for free so that you can make this protective lining in your bag as well. What I want to do is cut them to size first. So first I want to line it up and make sure that it's cut the right width. So I'm going to mark this. I want it to be slightly smaller, so I'm going to cut it. 
we'll mark it and cut them for the width first. Okay, and then we'll cut them for the height next. With a needle and thread, sew the perimeter of the two pieces of lining together, making sure to leave one wide length open. Insert the lining inside the bag, making sure all of the sewn edges are inside. You want the opening to be at the top so that we can line it up with the opening of the bag and sew them together around the perimeter. Cut two pieces of elastic 18 inches long and sew them into loops. Sew each elastic loop approximately four inches down from the top and three inches in from either of the sides. Sew the elastic loop to the felted bag working in the channel of the seam of the elastic loop. Weave in all of your loose ends. Download the free pattern for this case at my website and don't forget when you order the yarn kit I'll include two sheets of this foam lining for extra protection. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos.